Last night, the sky above Earth shimmered with an unfamiliar color, a cold green light that shouldn't exist so close to our sun. To most people, it was a distant glimmer, barely visible in twilight. But to those watching from observatories and space agencies around the world, it was the start of something that could rewrite our understanding of reality itself. 3 i Atlas, the same interstellar traveler that brushed past Mars, had entered its next act. And what it's doing now, as it nears the sun, has left every scientist, engineer, and astronomer speechless. For weeks, instruments recorded impossible readings. Instead of fading like every other comet before perihelion, 3 i Atlas was growing stronger, its core expanding, its glow intensifying, as if it were feeding on the sunlight rather than evaporating under it. By the time it crossed Mercury's orbit, its coma stretched nearly half a million kilometers, a luminous sphere wider than the sun itself. Solar probes had to recalibrate just to survive the glare. At NASA's Deep Space Network, the data feeds came in like a storm of numbers, spectral signatures that belonged nowhere on the periodic table ultraviolet frequencies that pulsed with mechanical precision. Every 22 seconds, the same interval recorded over Mars, the light would flicker, pause, and return. On, off, on, off. No comet behaves like that. Nothing in nature keeps time that perfectly. The James Webb Space Telescope finally locked on for a three-hour observation. What it saw turned scientific disbelief into quiet panic. Inside the comet's glowing envelope were lines, thin, luminous, geometric lines, interlocking hexagons, rotating in sync with the pulses. They weren't random ice fractures. They were structure, design. As Webb tracked it longer, the pattern rotated, shifted, and then, shockingly, realigned itself toward the sun as though acknowledging its observer. For a moment, every instrument flatlined. Then the signal resumed, brighter than before. At 9.17 UTC, 3i Atlas erupted. A burst of ultraviolet energy struck the inner solar wind like a shock wave. The Solar Dynamics Observatory recorded it as a flare, originating not from the sun, but aimed at it a directed beam traveling outward before being absorbed by the star's corona. Minutes later, the sun answered. Magnetic storms surged outward in perfect resonance with the 22-second rhythm. For the first time in history, the sun was pulsing back. Within hours, probes near Mercury went silent. A temporary blackout swept across three satellites simultaneously, their sensors overloaded by an electromagnetic surge moving out outward from the comet. When connection was restored, each probe carried residual static, a repeating binary pattern buried in the noise. The same pattern later decoded to the sequence 1-1-2-3-5. The Fibonacci progression, coincidence or communication. By October 10th, 3, I Atlas outshone Venus. The green star in the dawn sky became visible even through city haze. Social media filled with videos of the eerie glow. Some saw beauty, others an omen. Hashtags like hashtag the green visitor trended for days. But hidden beneath the excitement was fear. The comet's trajectory had changed again. A fractional shift, just four ten thousandths of a degree, yet enough to alter its exit path through the inner system. That's impossible for a natural body, unless something inside was steering. Officially, NASA called it non-gravitational acceleration. Unofficially, leaked transcripts used a different phrase, intentional drift. Down on Earth, high-altitude weather balloons began collecting microparticles that matched no known cosmic dust. Their molecular chains repeated in patterns, loops of carbon and nitrogen, resembling encoded data rather than chaotic chemistry. Some scientists compared them to biological polymers, the building blocks of self-assembly. It was as if the comet's tail was printing instructions into space. 
By mid-October, radio observatories around the world were receiving interference synchronized with the 22-second pulse, a rhythm soft but deliberate like a heartbeat echoing across the void. Inside mission control, faces stayed calm for the cameras, but behind closed doors the tone was different. One engineer described the signal as something that's aware it's being watched. Then came a day that split belief. At 2.41 UTC, the comet flared again, a concentrated beam of light that briefly rivaled the sun's brightness in ultraviolet. For a full eight seconds, every solar probe reported total sensor saturation. When the light subsided, new material appeared around 3I Atlas, rings of faintly metallic dust orbiting its nucleus in perfect symmetry. Five rings, equidistant, each one humming with faint radio emissions. To anyone watching, it looked less like a comet and more like an awakening machine. By now, conspiracy theories flooded the internet. Alien probe, interstellar beacon, dormant seed. But even the skeptics fell silent when the Hubble Space Telescope captured the next frame. For the first time, at the comet's very center, a single dark structure became visible. An object roughly a kilometer wide, hexagonal in shape, casting its own faint magnetic field. No one knew what to call it. Nasalabled it simply, Core Object A. And still, the pulses continued. 22 seconds. Always 22. Every major observatory turned its lenses inward. The European Southern Observatory in Chile detected faint flashes within the coma. Not random, but patterned like Morse code. Green curtains of light rippled across tropical skies, and through all of this, one question echoed through every control room. What happens when it reaches the sun? Perihelion, the closest approach, is projected for October 29th. After that, its orbit will sling outward, cutting directly through Earth's orbital lane in late December. Not a collision, the experts promise, just close, dangerously close, but close enough for its dust and coated particles to brush against our atmosphere, to seed something new, chemical, biological, or worse, intentional. Some believe 3i Atlas is simply decaying, an alien relic unraveling as it falls. Others fear it's activating, that the sun itself is the trigger, a stellar key waking something that has slept for eons between the stars. Already, certain solar frequencies are shifting. Radio astronomers at Arecibo's successor dish have detected harmonic overtones never before recorded in the sun's acoustic oscillations. And every 22 seconds, a faint echo answers from Earth's upper atmosphere. Our planet is part of the dialogue. For the first time in human history, we may not be observing the universe. We may be participating in it. So once again, the solar system holds its breath. Because somewhere between the sun and the stars, a green glowing traveler is teaching us something we were never ready to learn. Maybe it's a message. Maybe it's a test, or maybe it's simply watching to see who notices. The next pulse is due any moment now.